Cakes are part of nearly every celebration, and there's something to fit every occasion, from the most elegant wedding cake to a humble family favorite. Today on Sugar Rush, it's a bride's dream come true, as a New York cake artist brings heirloom jewels to life in sugar. Also, a Las Vegas pastry chef decides there's virtue in simplicity, just like mom used to make. Plus, cake the French way, with lots of layers smothered in mousse and slathered with chocolate. I'm Warren Brown. We've got cakes every which way ahead on Sugar Rush. Of course, most special occasion cakes are far more elaborate. In New York, Ron Ben Israel is a designer known for his spectacular wedding cake creations. He often drapes his cakes with satin, lace, and jewels. Amazingly, they're all done in sugar. With such meticulous attention to detail, it can take Ron and his crew days to make just one of these cakes. The entire process usually begins with a bride's request. Andrea, Hi. so nice to see nice you again. To see you. I'm so glad you could make it today. Thank you. So this is the lace that's on the dress. Oh, this is amazing. And there are three solid bands and then the lace is in between. This was my grandmother's brooch. Oh. And I would love to incorporate it into the cake somehow. Oh, this is great. So this must have been made in the 20s. You can see by I the quality so. of the I, work. I think so. For Andrea's special day, Ron will attempt to recreate her antique brooch in sugar paste. He also plans to duplicate the satin and lace on her wedding dress. It won't be easy, but Ron loves a challenge. I can't wait to do the cake. Ron has a clear vision in mind, but making that a reality is something else. I think the four-tiered uh, cake will really give you that look. After sketching out his ideas for the high fashion cake, it's into the kitchen. So how do you dress a cake in lace? To begin, Ron rolls out some sugar dough. It's made mostly of powdered sugar, which allows it to become a very smooth type of frosting. And of course, it's very sweet. You won't believe how Ron turns the sugary frosting into delicate lace and sparkling jewels. Find out a few secrets from a master cake artist when Sugar Rush continues. In New York City, Ron Ben Israel is known for his lavish wedding cakes. His creations in sugar have made many brides' dreams come true. So how will he get the lacy effect of the bride's gown on the cake he's making today? The trick is to make the dough paper thin so Ron sends it through a pasta machine. So I'm using the pasta machine to roll it very evenly, thinner and thinner. Paper thin, it actually has to be transparent. When it's nearly transparent, he pairs the sugar with a real piece of lace. And finally the lace is rolled together with the sugar dough. The result? The intricate pattern is etched into the dough. This technique transfers even the tiniest detail to the sugar. To complete the look, Ron carves out floral shapes. For pieces this small, he can't use just any cookie cutter. These are very delicate floral shapes. They have many more grooves and details than your regular cookie cutter. Once he's cut out the shapes, he'll attach the sugar lace. The cake is iced in French chocolate to provide plenty of contrast. I'm using my sugar glue, which is a reduction of the sugar paste, so it will become seamless with the frosting. But real lace has even more texture. So to get a 3D effect, he dabs on details with royal icing. The royal icing is gonna form into tiny candy-like pearls. The cake is shaping up, but Ron needs a little help to finish all the details. I think it looks fantastic. We need four more people, four more hours, we'll be done.
his top-notch crew takes over, finishing a delicate lace and perfecting the satin ribbons and bows. All those details get a brushing of champagne-colored luster dust to give them a beautiful sheen. And I love how the sparkle catches the light, and it will be even better once the candles are lit in the reception room. Meanwhile, Ron turns to his biggest challenge, recreating the bride's antique brooch. For this cake, he'll need to make two. He starts with modeling clay. I'm starting to get the feel of the antique jewel, and then I'll expand it to 150%, so it will match the scale of the cake. This work calls for precision tools. This is one of my favorite tools, and I do not want to think what my dentist actually does with that. But for my needs, for mo modeling is very useful. Once he's got a nearly perfect replica, he gets to play the role of the mad scientist, mixing up some silicone. This you don't learn in pastry school. He pours the silicone over his clay model, making sure to cover it completely. After letting it dry overnight, Ron reveals the finished design. Yes, it worked. The third and final step is to fill the mold and create the brooch out of sugar. Turn it over, gently flex silicone, and we have a perfect replica of our model. All that's left is to make the sweet brooch glimmer like the real thing. Ron paints it with edible silver, then blends in some real gold. We are allowed to use on food anywhere between 22 to 23 carat of pure gold. And for even more bling, he makes jewels from royal icing. Brush with a sparkling luster. When it's done, it's a beautiful match, the crowning touch on a cake covered in bridal lace. Almost as good as the original. Or is it better? Covered in lace and two sugar brooches, a designer custom cake like this costs about $2,500. But you won't ever see one exactly like it again. Ron Ben Israel makes sure each of his cakes is unique, just like the bride herself. But for now, it's my favorite of all time. I always like the last cake the most. The cake reflects antique fashion, but the sugar techniques are cutting edge. And that turns out to be a perfect marriage of styles.